thank you very much. Uh, so um, I want to uh, report the progress or what we are doing in a as most simplest way so that I can um, make you understanding what I'm trying to say. So this is our team and uh, we are a very small team and uh, consists with a lab guy. Oh, the name is not here, but uh, lab guy myself and Mark Smith are sitting there. And we have a, a modeling um, a specialist who can do the radiative transfer, like Chris McKay, Mark Malley. And then uh, we try to combine those uh, techniques to help the observations. So uh, first, I think uh, the photochemical haze in the atmosphere is a product that how the planets such as chemical compositions or pr pressure temperature is responding to their stellar irradiations like a different type of spectra or flux. And all of these feedbacks really determine that what kind of haze, where it may and determine. So if we can understand this process and if we have the observations of the haze in uh, clouds, we might be able to understand the chemical compositions or planetary properties or the stellar flux better. And this is, I know that's ambitious, but it's also related to the habitability because it uh, strongly affects the climate. So um, we, I like to talk two things here. This is the uh, giant, gas giant and artistic impressions. I think it's most of these color has no strict uh, base that, so this is really the imaginations, but what we are doing is really simple, okay? If we have this kind of photograph or color or spectral properties, what is going on? What are the material? How, what makes this kind of difference? That's what we are trying to answer and doing some experiment here. So there are a lot of, lot of parameters, space that we can work on, but here we focus on this uh, temperature or this redox state to do start with the first easiest experiment. So now we focus on this hydrogen domain atmosphere, like we have a good example in the solar system called the Jupiter or I'm putting like a warm neutrino hot Jupiter type. And then uh, um, it's going to, from the methane to carbon monoxide and we probably have some between them. So my first guess was, okay, if you want to make some carbonaceous haze, well, methane is much easier. So I, my, I was expecting that hydrogen carbon monoxide, it's kind of like a, not going to make a dark material, but well, let's do the experiment. So just skipping off, what we have is that try to simulate the uh, natural environment and then put the gas mixtures, make measurements of like mass production rate or optical constants. Uh, one photograph is going to tell most of the stuff rather than numbers. So I was pretty wrong. Hydrogen carbon monoxide gas mixtures making a lot of dark, dark material, which is very hard to clean up my chamber. It's cost a lot of money. So it's very dark and our optical constants is around like one. And then it's very, very stable. You can't clean it up, burn it, no, <laughs> oxidize it, no. So this kind of material could present in the hot temperatures. So what are the message that, okay, Warm exoplanet atmosphere could be very dark in a UV visible albedo. It seems like uh, it's consistent with the current observation. So we really want to test that. This is the black suit balls that could be made for that warm uh, carbon monoxide uh, driven photochemistry or more like a Jupiter type chemistry, methane driven chemistry. So this kind of things that we are trying to do. So, uh, and now let's go into the Earth-like planets. And uh, why we are interested in this Earth-like planets, and I believe, I agree with most of you, we wanna search life elsewhere sometimes. So, but Earth-like means that 
uh, Tony and Vicky already tell that Earth's compositions are changing over the time. So when, when, what time uh, our, so I mean, uh, half of the life history is that like, different without oxygen. So we want to know that what kind of Earth life planets we can find it. And um, so uh, previous works are trying to simulate like uh, compositions and uh, um, these trainers did the nice work that methanogens could make methane and that kind of being converted to the smoggy bowl like Titan. So um, we want to understand how, what kind of conditions that, that uh, haze particles are generated for example, like a different methane to carbon dioxide ratio in the quantitative number. And with this number, then we can having that, okay, uh, this is like a uh, geometric spectra we calculated from titans. It's a very thick haze particle and it converted to the really scattering uh, blue dot. So this kind of data, uh, can be obtained from the future direct observations. So it's still far that uh, we can say uh, the purpose was we want to find another archaea on Earth. That's uh, definitely the world of the life, the microorganisms, but we are still far. I mean, we, it can be like this kind of things, but definitely we still need more work. So we have communicating with uh, uh, other groups like a uh, uh, microorganism, uh, microbiochemist bio in Arizona State University. And because of this Nexus collaborations, uh, one graduate student is coming to our lab to do some combined experiment with a micro, micro uh, methanogens or microorganisms and this kind of environment simulation. So it's gonna be the couple uh, experiment. And also we have been talking with uh, Neil and how the analogy with the gas giants to the nebula model. So, uh, yeah, uh, this is it, and uh, I made it short, but I bring up detailed posters, but uh, this is my simple message. Thank you very much. Um, in one of your slides, a couple of slides down, you show the, um, oh yeah, this one, uh, that you had much more carbon dioxide than nitrogen. Where's it coming from? Uh, that's a. Uh, I thought that nitrogen is always more than carbon dioxide. The timing is a lot of different <laughs> discussions, but uh, some arguments by uh, Henry Lammers, uh, he says that to keep the atmospheric nitrogens, you need a, enough coolant. So that means that 100 bar of carbon dioxide has to be present in a very, very early over the Earth atmosphere. It looks like but, the nitrogen comes from the titanic activity and the Earth was very really titanically active. So, uh, the, uh, as far as I know, that all models assume that nitrogen was much more abundant. It's a very inert gas. It's very hard to get rid of. Well, that's, but uh, the recent uh, Nature Geoscience paper shows that some surprising data that nitrogen in the archaean could be like a half of the bar, right? I so, saw the opposite pressure, yes. Yeah. So this is really just a cartoon. It's in the. Thank you. Hi, um, so if you go back to your slides on the part you just, uh, where you showed, uh, uh, yeah. oh, that slide. Uh, yes. So the soup formation. Uh, there was this. Do uh, you know which one of the hard, which hard uh, you think have uh, a very low albedo? Possibly in the temperature range uh, to form the superposition because uh, there is this one planet I think it's called S two B where uh, it's in the right temperatures to form between eight hundred to twelve hundred K where oh. you can have higher higher quality of change of hydrocarbons um, can form and can have really low it's a very dark planet mm -hmm. uh, and I think Eric Hebrard and I are working on photochemistry more about do this oh well, so, let's talk about yeah. that. <laughs> so uh, I have I've not seen anyone else talking about it, and we thought, hey, you know what? Why not do this? Because there's at least one planet that can that looks like a, it's really dark. And uh -huh. we, we thought maybe it could be soon, and I see that you are you are you are 
maybe. Yeah, maybe the good time we have coming to the a similar conclusions from the very different way. So that may right. be a good collaboration. Okay. Yeah. Great.